from ahead. So that should be happening by the first of the year, hopefully. That's amazing. 620 credit score. So almost everybody can qualify and go. Yep. That's awesome. Nice. And you that's think that's going to be start of the year then? Yeah. 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 Perfect. That's yep. great. And then what about um, leverage? Is it about the same ratios? Uh, yeah, they're doing right now, like I said, they're doing 100 on the 100. Oh, I'm sorry. What the, hold on one second. Sorry. Jesus Christ. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, it's 100% on rehab, 100% on purchase. Uh, the rates will be anywhere 10 to 12% in that range. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. That is good news. Anybody else got good news or something exciting that you're working on? It's some, a realtor called me and asked if I knew anybody who would be interested in partnering with his seller. It's a development deal in Newtown. It's in IAEA. So kind of close to the mall, Pro Ridge. And I have a listing right there in that area. So it's a super, it's a highly desired area. So, but they need development knowledge. And what I do know about it, so it's a new town at yeah, it's a seven unit development part. Every, all the terms are still up in the air on agreement. The grounds have been partially prepped. Um, so still groundwork needs to be done. One lot has been sold, seven more need to be developed. So if anyone has any good background, I was thinking Jonah, but if someone on this call has that and wants the connection, I can just get the number and you guys can connect up. That's awesome. Sounds like a great project and a good location too. So hit up Ashley if uh, anybody's interested in that or knows somebody who's interested. Can you put your information, Ashley, in the chat? Yeah. Phone, phone number, coffee orders, Christmas list, you know, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Ashley, Benjamin. are you looking for someone local? Because I have some friends out in New York who are developers that are looking for outside opportunities. Um, no, they don't have to be local. So they have some people like, um, someone from China who's interested in possibly partnering. So they don't have to be local, but they would have to just have the right connections for knowledge. I don't know tons. I mean, I'm just an agent, but I do know that area has settlement issues and drainage. So those are two big factors that you want to make sure that you have the right retaining walls. Do you need your soil, normal soils engineer and stuff. Um, so as long as they're savvy, I just don't want to get yeah. anyone to like a bad deal. So um totally i'll send put my email in if you want to make that i'll put you guys in touch they do a cool. lot of land land plays cool thanks that's no awesome problem. ashley you're not just an agent you're a rock star agent so uh, so own hey, it hey, you're fantastic on. you do a great job the rest of us agents want to be like you when we grow up <laughs> yeah that's funny <laughs> <laughs> All right. On. Anybody else got, uh, that's a great lead, by the way. That's, that's fantastic. That's a great project. Anybody else got something that would be interesting to share? Keone's always got something in the works. You got anything good, brah? Sorry, I'm trying to multitask. I'm actually on the other end. <laughs> you know, Ignite is going on too, right? So. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Balance both screens and watching, and I'm like listening on both ends. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't, but hello. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm always here for the knowledge, man. If I can help out in any way. I don't really have anything, wants or needs right now. Definitely need money always for projects. So if anybody want to lend, let me know. I'm more than happy to work with you guys and talk story. That's awesome. Sweet. All right. Well, then you better go back to Ignite and let us know if there's any good gems. If there's any good uh, recorded sessions, bro, let us know and then we can all share. And it's going on right now, actually. This is the one that I wanted to get. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, but um, Lee Gen, as far as AI, I've never used AI, but in the last mastermind that I was in, that's what all of the top producers were using. And I'm using my direct mail. So, like, I'm just learning artificial intelligence. And I just started my campaign um, this week, basically. So, we'll see how it produces. But it seems unbelievable. Whoever's using it, I'd love to talk to you guys about it what you guys are producing and what's the, the results and feedback on that. But Sweet. yeah. Yeah. Um, jot the information down on that session and then we can try to look it up after because they always, uh, they always do a good job of recording and posting and making it available. That'd be, that'd be solid. 
Will do. Yahoo. All right. Anybody else got any other things going on? Oh, if anybody happens to be in Vegas, I'd love to hook up with you. So um, shoot me a shoot me a text or shoot me a message. Hold on a second. I will give you my phone number. There's my cell number. So yeah, if anybody knows of anybody in Vegas or wants to do business in Vegas or is looking at um, properties or off market stuff, um, shoot me a message. Love to chat a bit. It'd be cool. Solid. Anybody else? Otherwise, we're gonna um, we're gonna today's actually pretty cool. Kind of talking a little bit about what Keone's talking about on the AI side. Uh, we have a guest who's actually not really a guest. He's pretty regular, uh, but he's going to be sharing a bit a lot about what he's doing with the off market side. So uh, we'll introduce him in a second. But anybody else got any other announcements or anything you need or anything you want? Christmas songs you want to share? We can make it kata oke okay hour. That could be kind of fun too. No takers on Kata OK, so maybe we'll just move right along. Hi, Stacy. Stacy's in. You want to do Kata OK? Let's do them. You know, like hear my voice. I promise you that. <laughs> I'm sure it sounds awesome. Everybody can do Christmas carols. Well, no worries. And <clears throat> so, if anybody does have anything, feel free to post it on the uh, chat, and then we can. Uh, follow up a little bit later, but this is good. We won't take too long today in case anybody is trying to jump in on the Ignite stuff, but um, all of you know Keith. Uh, he's the baby face selling um, high school fundraising items door to door um, throughout Oahu. Uh, so he's actually going to be sharing today uh, a little bit higher end than uh, chocolates and popcorn. Um, but I think most of you heard that he was military for eight years, active duty. Uh, and he, congratulations, just got out of service 10 days ago. So a big woo and thanks for your service. Awesome. Um, but yeah, so he's, um, he looks like he's 15, but he's actually 25. Uh, and he's got the strategies of a 35 years plus in the industry. So he and his dad started flipping uh, in DC and then they've been all over the country flipping properties. Uh, and so just over the last, uh, couple of years, he spent over $200,000 on marketing. And so most of us haven't spent $200,000 on marketing. And so, uh, but I think we all wish we could or want to, but at a very minimum, I think we would all want to know what have you learned, Keith, in spending $200,000 and what mistakes have you made? So we don't have to make those mistakes and we can spend less and get the same results. So uh, it's going to be cool. Keith's going to share a little bit. So with that, uh, how about a big applause and a woohoo to Keith. Yay. Thanks guys. Good morning. Good afternoon. Happy Aloha Friday. <clears throat> um, so I, really what I, I wanted to, uh, to share, Kiko had asked me to share some stuff and, and I had some reservations at first because I've seen so many investors fall into a hole, fall into a trap, fall into the, the desire to do this off market stuff, but they, they don't really plan accordingly and they fall off the bandwagon and they waste a lot of money and they end up getting really, really discouraged. And I think that if anybody's tried, the majority of people have fallen into that. So I had some reservations about sharing. And so today I don't want to talk about like my numbers because I, arguably I have some of the largest numbers of anybody that I know. But those numbers mean nothing if you aren't consistent and you aren't tracking your stuff. And so those are the two things that I want <clears throat> to go in today. Uh, but first, I wanted to share when, when we got started in 2016, um, I, I decided I'm going to drop about $7,000 on a direct mail campaign. Everyone was uh, telling me, you know, go on list source, use real flow, pull these lists. You can skip trace for two cents. Uh, per lead over here. And, and then you can send direct mail out. And the cheapest place was click to mail. So I have one of these postcards. I had thousands of these returned. And you can see my ugly bald mug here. Uh, my <laughs> mug shot back from 2016. <clears throat> and then this little note saying like, hey, uh, I'd be interested in, in buying your property. And um, so I, I've sent several hundred thousands of these postcards because they're dirt cheap. They're 34 cents. And so it's like for the cost literally of a stamp, uh, you can send this postcard through click to mail. And so I had sent those and I didn't get a very good return. I wasn't tracking any of my stuff. 
Um, but I was like, you know what? A lot of a lot of these people are saying you need to use like a no joke written letter. But I, uh, well, I tried. I had Miranda write two thousand letters because her handwriting is is nicer than mine. So she literally hand wrote two thousand postcards. And after two thousand, she's like, Keith, screw you. I'm not doing this anymore. I cannot do it. <laughs> and so we uh, we sent her fonts in. And they, they made, I mean, we sent her writing in and they turned it into a font for us. So then we started sending these letters because supposedly they get a higher rate of return, a higher response rate. And so then we started sending these ourselves with a real, a real stamp and everything. Um, and so we sent a couple of thousand, maybe a couple of tens of thousands of these when we were in Virginia and still weren't getting the response that we wanted. So we went back to postcards and this time I was like, you know what, I'm really going to get these people's attention. So we're going to use a Google image of their house. And uh -huh. let me tell you, I tried this in, in Virginia, worked pretty well. Uh, I tried this in Hawaii and I got death threats. So don't freaking do this in Hawaii. It's not okay. It is um, really, really bad juju to do this in Hawaii. So <clears throat> please why listen why to do you, me. Keith, why do you think that is? Like, why such a difference do you think? Kikoa. I'm a Howley, you're a local. I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> well, it's a picture of a house, not a picture of you. So it's not I like know, but it like really scares guy. people. It really scares people. It says Google in the bottom right here. Like it's a, clearly a screenshot. Um, actually, it says it in both corners, one of them in black font, one of them in white. But people thought that I was like stalking them, that I had the time to go take a picture of their house and like upload it, cut it out. They thought that I like actually sent this because it's our, it's my font. You know, it's my, my personal font with red ink yeah. and everything on it. And I mean, I'm telling you what, I got a great response on this, but no conversions. Great response to people saying, <laughs> why are you showing up to my house like this? You know, and um, I didn't buy a single house off of this postcard, wasted a lot of money. Huh. And, and really, that's going to be the theme today is don't listen to anybody because they're like, oh, I, I, I've, I've done 200,000 uh, postcards or I've spent so much money or I have tens of thousands of leads. The more, I'm telling you, the more leads you have, the worse. So we'll get into that a little bit more. So I was like, you know what? This is crap. This is unprofessional. Me showing up to somebody's house is unprofessional. So I'm going to make it a really legit, good looking, beautiful houses postcard. You know how many houses I bought? Zero. And this is going into actually um, who was talking about it? AI, Keone talking about AI. So what I did was, uh, this was like two years ago. AI has been around for a while and it was really bad back then. But basically I had them text sell to this phone number or on the back, you can see, go to sell my house now, hawaii.com. And I've since gotten rid of that. I think I've gotten rid of that. But anyway, what we would do is they would text them. They would text that number and then a bot would, would have this conversation with them. The bot was really buggy. And if somebody was like, screw you, I'm not selling my house. Be like, oh, thanks for that information. Uh, can I ask how many beds and baths it is? And they're like, I told you I'm not selling the house. Oh, thanks for letting me know. Have you done any recent repairs on the roof or is there foundation issues? And it just ended up horribly. But, but my, my goal was to get everyone to this website. It was a funnel because if they go to that website, they get a cookie on their computer. And, and, and uh, so those cook for those of you uh, who aren't really into this tech stuff. Cookie isn't something that you eat. It's, it attaches to your computer. And now when you go into Google and you, you search something, you, you all have tried like shopping for something. And then you go into Facebook. Next thing you know, that thing is on Facebook. You're like, God, I'm following me if you didn't convert. And so that's exactly what I did. I followed these people for months and I showed them ads on Google and Facebook and Yahoo and Bing and everything else that they're searching on. It was awful. And so this was my last postcard, probably around like July of last year. It was like, these are all colors. It's our logo. I was like, I'm just going to be super transparent. I'm going to send it straight to our website. This one converted a lot better. Um, everything about us, it, it has the beat where A plus and BBB were five stars on Google and, and um, Facebook and all these places. And so I was like, I'm just going to be transparent. People don't like my face. So I'm going to put my logo. And that one did a little bit better. <laughs> But it was all for because not. they think your books you're selling chocolates, bro. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they're like this guy can't afford to buy my house. What is he talking about? <laughs> hey, uh, the Keith, the, that whole BBB and that the rating on there—that's super yeah. creative. Where did you get that idea? And uh, and it just seems like it's working. Honestly, it was when I was doing um, some SEO research in 2019. I was trying to get backlinks to my website, and BBB has a lot of um, we just call it juice SEO juice that it yeah. can push to your to your website. Hi, sweetie. 
um, that it can push to your website. And so I got accredited through BBB and over the, over the years, we've gone from A to A plus. I think you have to have it for like four consecutive years and A before you finally get A plus. Yeah. Um, and so it's, I got it just because it's pushing SEO juice into my, my website. And so I was like, shoot, I may as well throw the credibility up um, uh, on here. Yeah, it's brilliant. If, if any of you um, have a company and you haven't been BBB accredited, certified, and kind of gone through the process, it's so worth it. And it's not costly. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt to do the Q&A. But um, we do the same thing. And you're totally right. We put it on our website for the property management company and the construction company and the, the uh, what do you call it? The juice, the SEO juice. Yeah, SEO juice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it works, man. So that's a huge gem. Love it. So, and an, another thing I think equally as important, and especially here in Hawaii, is having um, oh, dude, I just lost it. Chamber of Commerce, Hawaii Chamber of Commerce. If you're part of that, you pay for that. It's it's relatively inexpensive. Um, that shows like a, a lot of credit worthiness that you're you're local. You care about the community. That's a really big thing in, in it. Um, I don't know. It's just an outward show of a inward heart. I think that you can do that. That you're willing to pay. Um, for that sort of credibility. And <clears throat> so we, it's a little bit of some, um, it's a little bit of accountability, I think too, because they can see that and say, absolutely. Hey, this guy is performing at a certain level of excellence and with honesty and integrity. Otherwise BBB would definitely not give you that. So yeah. Um, and yeah, each one, one of these places that you're like, you're boasting, oh, I have a, a BBB accreditation. Oh, I'm, I'm with a Hawaii board. Well, let me tell you, if somebody, if you do something wrong, you do something bad to piss somebody off, they're going to report you and you're no longer going to have that. So it's yeah. a, it's a liability if you're not doing the right thing. Um, so it just keeps you honest, you know, and, and doing the right thing all the time and trying to provide good customer yeah. service <clears throat> Sorry for that diversion, but that was great. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, yeah. So, um, so you were on that last postcard and then you so were showing I started doing these postcards because I thought it was the cheapest way in, um, in Virginia. So I was stationed in Virginia until, um, until 2017, we moved out here. And so I had started the same thing over here. But once we got to Hawaii, I was like, this is pretty expensive. At that point, my, my cost per lead, um, and I was not tracking it effectively, but my cost per lead was around 80 to $90 sometimes uh, with like a bad postcard or a bad letter, it would go upwards of like 200. And that's just not effective. It's not sustainable. And so I was looking for different ways to get that cheaper. And so we went to, um, we went to text blasting and ringless voicemail because both of those things can be done uh, pretty much. You can, you can like write down, we wrote down like there's 38 common responses basically. You'll, and you'll find this out. You text a million people and all those responses that come back, they're going to kind of overlap. Maybe they're worded a little bit differently, but there's 38, com from what I found, 38 very similar responses. And so write those down. And then I wrote down the responses that I would put. How would I respond to this? And I made this Excel spreadsheet and I passed this off to a virtual assistant. I said, I don't have time to, to message 2,000 people a day. Right. And I don't have time for you to write this out because virtual assistants are pretty slow with with typing, or at least where we were paying at that price point, we're pretty you were slow. Gonna, so we, you were going to ask your wife to do it by hand too. Right? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, I'm sure. After the uh, first time. <clears throat> and so we made them buttons. So the the virtual assistant would just say like, okay, this is what they ask. Here's this one. Here's the answer. Click the button. So they don't have to type anything. It's exactly how I would say it. And it saved a lot of time. And so <clears throat> I, I want to, well, I'll just say for text messages, it was nine to $12 cost per lead nine to $12. And for ringless voicemail, it was like 18 to $22 cost per lead. And so the, if you do a lot of, well, most people don't do a lot of marketing. You'll find out when you do some off market marketing, that those are really, really good, really low cost per leads. And so seemingly, I mean, I was like, dude, this is the cheapest thing ever. We're talking to so many people. Let's dump 10 grand in this month and see what we get out. Oh, we got a deal. Okay, let's dump 15 grand in this month and, and get something out. But it ended up being a really big waste of money. I'm going to be super honest. Like most people aren't going to be this transparent, but we were getting hundreds of, of leads coming in saying, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, I wasn't really planning on selling my house, but if, you, if you're willing to, to buy my house, I want a million too. You know, you're like, your house isn't worth a dime over 400K. Shut up. It's a condo <laughs> in freaking Wahiwa, you know? <laughs> and people are like, yeah, you know, like they want to win the, the lottery. So they're responding back and we're dealing with 
with really low quality, low performing leads. And so I wanted another level of qualification because anybody can kind of uh, lie to you or be deceiving over a text, but it's a little bit harder when you get them on the phone. And so I, I hired some cold callers and doing the same thing, buying a list, skip tracing it and sending it to the cold callers. But there was two things that I did differently because when you're doing this off market marketing, um, data is everything. So we say that this is a numbers game and everything is a funnel. So if you buy bad data from a bad source that already is not credible, it doesn't matter how good your skip tracing is. It doesn't matter how good your cold color is. It doesn't matter how good any of your marketing is or anything after that process, how good of a salesman you are, how well you convert. If your data is bad, you're freaking screwed. You're going to throw money down the drain. And so spending the money to get good data is imperative to your success. And second to that is skip tracing. If you think that you can get good quality data for two cents, you're wrong. For eight cents, you're wrong. Maybe for 15 cents, yes. Anything above 15 cents, I would say they, they probably, unless they're ripping you off and they're not a, quali uh, a good source, I think I've probably tried like 10 or 11 or 12 different skip tracing services. And anything that I've tried that's super cheap was really, really bad. And nothing else after that matters. It doesn't matter how professional your, your marketing looks or how much follow-up you have built in or how good you are. Everything goes back to the data and the data is the list provider and who you're skip tracing. After that, what I learned after, and I just pulled out five random ones, but I have 17 different postcards and letters and stuff like that. I put so much, so much thought and energy into like devising the, the perfect copy, the perfect words, the perfect language and, the, and where to put the logo, where to put my face and, and all, the color scheme and how it looks aesthetically. And I'm telling you what, if you don't do it consistently, it doesn't matter. If you can't prolong that, that campaign for six, seven, eight months minimum, then you may as well not even do it. And I'm being genuine with this. I've made so many mistakes putting this much money in. I made so many mistakes. And if there's anything that I can tell you, it's consistency and tracking. And we'll get more into the tracking here in a little bit. So Keith, in regards to consistency um, and not be a one hit wonder where you're just like throwing all your money into one mailer and hope that, it, you know, land something you're saying, you know, go for several months. Um, would that be true then to say, go for several months, pick one avenue and kind of stick with that as opposed to taking your you know, if you got $2,000 instead of going $500 and then try some ring lists and then try some SMS and then try some direct mail, would you say, hey, you know, in your experience, just take your 2000 spread it out over, say, you know, five months, which is 400 a month, and then just hit one channel like SMS for those five months and hit it hard? Or, or what would you say to somebody who's just getting started, got a limited budget and kind of going off of what you're saying there is consistency? I is couldn't answer your question until that last sentence, because I think that it depends on how, what your budget is going to be and how much time you have to devote to it. If you're, if you're just starting out, more than likely, you only have a couple hundred bucks a month. And mm -hmm. I, I think at that point, it's really important for you to do everything as a numbers game. So whatever you can, cons as, as much that you can put out, because I'm telling you, if you put out like a hundred mailers a month, it's going to be a long time until you get it. It's going to be months guys. And it's, and you're going to get discouraged. And as, I mean, we all handle so much discouragement before we quit. And so trying to get that deal, it's really important to get experience, right? So putting something out there, even if it's bad copy, even if it looks like crap, getting as much out there and getting the experience when you're new, getting people, you know, learning how to answer the phone call, qualifying people, asking them about the general information about their property, the condition, the time frame that they want to sell, their motivation level, their asking price, all of these things are, are that's like our five-step process that my acquisition manager, he talks about those things and just practicing and refining your skills is really important in the beginning. So I think whatever you can do, to get the most engagement is the best. And so that would probably be texting or ringless voicemail. Um, but if you have, if you don't have a lot of time, then I, then I would, I would take that away actually, because texting a ringless voicemail, although it's the cheapest and it's the most sustainable for the longest period of time with a limited budget, you're going to get really bad quality leads. It's going to be really cheap. And if you do enough of it, you're absolutely going to get deals. 
but it takes a lot of time and a lot of management hours to qualify, or rather to, at that point, when I was texting in, in uh, ringless voicemail, my point wasn't to qualify people, it was to disqualify people as fast as humanly possible. I have to go through 70 people, 70 leads today. And that takes hours, that takes a whole day. That's like 11 hours of, of being on the phone. So I need to disqualify the people within the first five minutes and get on to the next person. If you don't have that much time, then I would try to go something that has a little bit better lead uh, to contract conversion ratio, which is gonna, which means like you, you put in, I don't know, direct mails around 50 to 60. Usually you put out X amount of mailers and you bring in 50 leads. And out of these 50 people that you have to talk to, you get one deal. That's what I'm talking about. You do not want to do something where if you have limited time, you have 300 people that you have to qualify and manage and follow up with these people. Everyone knows you have a bunch of tire kicker sellers. And so dealing with these people that you have to follow up continuously with is not going to be conducive if you're on a, on a time budget, if you will. And so that uh, yeah, you just said a whole lot. I'm going to try. To I'm read. sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you're, you're like 50 times smarter than I am. So I've got to <laughs> back. So if uh, just maybe everybody else is smarter, but um, I, what I heard you say is that if you, if you don't have a lot of money, then SMS is a great way to go. SMS and text, because you get a lot for a little bit of money. The problem with that is that it's going to require a lot of follow-up on your part, but if you're a newer investor ready to jump into uh, direct marketing and time is on your side, because time doesn't cost us anything where buying lists does and hiring somebody. So that may be a good way to go if that's all you really got is 200 boxes. Do the SMS and just plan for, like you said, just getting on the phone and learning and, and answering those calls and sorting them out. But if you've got more money, if I heard you correctly, you said, then that's where maybe direct mail is better because it's going to cost you more on the outset, but it'll be less time. So you'll have, if you have more money and you don't want to spend a ton of time, direct mail is cool because like you said, you sent out seven postcards over the last several years and some of them were complete busts. Some of them told you to, you know, go to hell and die. Others yeah. were like, Hey, I'm kind of interested, but you had a higher conversion ratio. And so is that kind of what you said basically? Yeah. Exactly. And if, and if we could turn this into like some weird kind of chart where, where this is money going up and down as money, and this is time where you fall on this chart depends on what type of marketing you're going to do, what form what we call it media, what kind of media you're going to choose. And so text and ringless voicemail is like, you have no money, but you have a lot of time. It would be way over here. And then in the opposite corner, you have no time, but you have a lot of money. That would be like, inbound hot leads, meaning Facebook ads, Google PPC, stuff like that, where these people are like, I have a freaking problem. I need to fix it. I need to sell this house. They search something on Google or Facebook and boom, you're right there in front of them. That person fills up, takes the time to fill out a form and read through this stuff, answer your questions. You get that in dude. Right now we're doing that. And it's a 12 leads equal a, a contract. Whereas on the opposite spectrum, you have to deal with hundreds of people to get a contract. And so it takes no time to, to qualify 12 people. It takes a lot of time to qualify 300 people. And anywhere in between, it's kind of like that direct mail and stuff like that. It's kind of in the middle where it costs a little bit more, but you have a better conversion. I love it. Your fingers are a great graph. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> anybody got um, in? Um, there are some questions in the chat, which we'll get to when we get to kind of some of those points relative to lists and such. But anyone got any questions specifically about what Keith just said? Because I think that's pretty golden in terms of trying to prioritize if you're the person who has the money or if you're the person with time. And then going in from there on his hand chart to say, hey, here's where um, I can fit in. Any, other, any questions relative to those things? Just feel free to jump in. Keith, when you organize your processes, are you doing it mostly digital or do you do mostly like written? Like some people are like visual. How are you organizing your thoughts, your leads, your ideas? Or I'm just interested to see how your systems are. We always, we always do it um, both ways. So Podio is our CRM and in our Podio, we have a training app. That training app contains all the written SOPs as well as training videos. So I'll write everything out in, in the easiest language 
I can possibly, I do my very best to make it super simple so that a virtual assistant can easily understand it. And I like, I include pictures and draw arrows and like, there's the circle. Here's what I want you to do, that thing right there. And I show examples and stuff like that in a written SOP. And then I record, I use Loom, L-O-O-M, Loom.com. It's a, uh, well, I think I pay for it now because you can only record a hundred videos and we're, we've done several hundred videos deep or something, but it, it's free for the first hundred videos. I, re, I use Loom to record me doing it. So it's like, read this thing, watch this video. If you have any questions, feel free to, to, to reach out to me, but usually they, they just watch the video a couple of times, read through this a couple of times and we're good to go. They know the process. Really well. Can you do Loom on your phone and your computer, or just your computer? Oh, I don't know. I don't even have Loom on my phone. I only use my computer but I don't know if you can do it on your phone. I have a different screen recording app for my phone. iPhone. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Hey, Keith, what about the type of lists that you're actually hitting? Where are you sourcing those lists and, and what are good recommendations? Um, that was a great question. And then Lauren asked a question about the best skip tracer to bypass properties owned by business entities like LLCs? That's a great question, Lauren. <clears throat> well, I'll answer, I'll, hold on, let me stop sharing my screen so I can respond and everyone's paying attention. So to answer Lauren, I always have like a two to three tiered approach um, with skip tracing. We have like top top tier, this gives us the, the, the best quality skip tracing and then all no hits. Oh, and this is a bulk skip tracing. Okay, so it's really important that your first one is bulk. Actually, let me re let me rephrase that. Think about where I am. We're buying tens of thousands of, of people in a list. And so if you're buying a list that only has 68 people, then you can by all means do that individually. But when you have thousands, you need a bulk skip tracer. Okay, so we have tier one. This gives us the best skip tracing and it's bulk. And then all no hits go to this skip tracing. And this is also bulk, but it, it often doesn't get as many as this. So we split tested it, found this one is better than this one. But no hits go to this one. And then all the no hits from this one. So let's say we get like 90% hit rate on this. So 10% is going to go here. Out of this 10%, uh, 40% usually, 30 to 40% of them are no hits. So those 30 to 40% are going to go to this one. And this is a manual skip tracer. So my virtual assistants are going in and, and actually putting in like the name and the city that that person is in and getting it. So that's how we, we do it. I'm really digging deep. Uh, who asked this question? I forget who asked this question. I'm that's really a, that's a great, it's a great response, actually. Lauren asked the question, but it's a Lauren, great. Lauren, yeah. yeah um, that's, a great, uh, that's a great response. And I so know that for, this isn't my top tier. I'm really sorry, but I like made this decision a year ago on who I was going to use for skip tracing. And I don't remember. I know that my second tier, so I, I'm forgetting this one. My second tier is called bestskiptracer.com. Mm -hmm. And this one does LLCs and S corps and all of that stuff. So we used to have to do those things um, manually using a, a company called open corporate. And that's a manual skip tracer you can look through. Um, but why do, you know, now I'm buying list intentionally that has all these, these S corps and LLCs and it has like a mm -hmm. thousand, 1200 people in it. So now I'm using, um, best skip tracer and, and make sure that it has the R at the end. Bestskiptrace.com is bogus. It's a bunch of crap. Opens, uh, best skip tracer is the one that I'm talking about. And if I remember throughout this call, what my tier one is, I'll let you all know, cause it's really good. I know that I pay 18 cents for it. <laughs> 18 cents per lead. 18 cents per lead. And how many leads are you buying at a time? A hundred thousand ish. Thousand. Gotcha. And so of that 100,000, then that's bulk. And the next tier is bulk and then manual at the third level. Correct. That's awesome. And, and this what, one also does um, uh, LLCs and, and S corps and stuff. Okay. So while you're sp speaking about LLCs, so those ones will separate out business entities and LLCs? I, I don't. Um, okay. So let me be clear. When I'm, when I'm buying lists for sellers, because I also buy lists for buyers. But when I'm buying lists for sellers, I take out the LLCs and the S corps. Those people have enough investing wherewithal to know that it's better for them for taxes and for hedging their risk that I need to get an LLC. They put the money into buying an LLC or an S corp and managing it that they probably aren't the type of person that's going to make 
poor decisions that's or that's going to you know have them fall into my my mold for a motivated seller lead so gotcha. i take them out for for the list that i'm buying for sellers that i have never bought a property from an, an llc or an s corp and so now i just take them all out but when i'm uh, buying a, a buyer's list that's when I want the LLCs and I want the S corps and people throw those people throw those things away. They think they have the same mentality as the sellers, but here it's the opposite. The yeah. people that you want more probably have the wherewithal to have an LLC or an S corp. And I'm not trying to degrade anybody who's doing this in their personal name or anything. It's just, those people are usually my buyers. Gotcha. That's awesome. Good stuff. Okay. So somebody had asked what, um, what lists I get. Uh, I get a lot of lists from a lot of different sources um, and we can go into all of them like on another session because it would go genuinely there's like probably 15 different sources but the best ones um, that I found here in Hawaii when we expanded um, into mainland markets I just took the best of those to San Antonio was our most recent expansion and so um, I wanted to try them out. So I want to talk to you guys about uh, a concept that you've probably heard, which is list stacking. And then something that I, I or my business partner made up called uh, super stacking. So list stacking is like, here's a um, vacant high equity absence owner list. Okay. So, so each of this is its own list. This is its own list. This is its own list. But then you're like, I want this person to be in this list and this list and this list. And so this is a stacked list. So I'll get this stacked list. And so we said vacant absentee owner and high equity. And then I'll get this list that is um, inherited and a lien. They have a, a lien that's more than $12,000 on their property, right? And so this is also a stacked list. And then I put all the people into an Excel spreadsheet. And a super stacked list is if somebody is in this already stacked list and this already stacked list, that person comes out because we want what's called unique value lists. If I, if I just mail to this list or, or bring this voicemail, whatever form of media I'm going to choose, if I, if I target this list and I target this list, well, you're a doofus because you're spending an extra money marketing to this person twice. Do they need that? No, they're going to get pissed off. So pull them out, create only unique value lists. And so if this list is called A and this list is called B and I take anybody who's in both lists at the same time out, they're now in list A, B. So far making sense, anybody have any questions about what I'm doing? I know this is foreign concept, but this is like game changing. Hold on, sweetie. A, B oh, is your super remember. stacked? Yeah, A, B is my super stacked. Um, and so this is what we did. We bought 92 lists or something uh, going into San Antonio. And they were all, uh, not all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, uh, nine of them were not stacked lists. All the rest of them were stacked lists. And then we took all of these lists, combined them, and anybody who was an A-B scenario, we took out. Except sometimes you have like this list, you have this list, then you have this list, and they're in all three. Oh my gosh, that is going to equal a 100% conversion rate, literally. There's only going to be one person that is in an A, B, and C list, or God forbid you get an A, B, C, D, that person will pay you to take their house. A, B, C house, if they're an A, B, C, they're going to give you the house. A, B, C is like, I'll pay $10,000 for you to take this off my hands. That's the type of people that you want to be going after. Those are the people that genuine, if you're like not a shark, those are the people that you can actually help. These are the people that are going to come to you and say, you, like, I've been praying for you. You're, you must be an angel. You know, are you real? Like, let me kiss you. That's the type of, of people that I like to work with is people who want to work with me. Gotten any sellers like that yet, but that sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> well done, they buy the um, whole box of chocolate bars, huh, Keith? Yeah, they buy his whole fundraising. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the whole box, man. You don't got that baby face. <laughs> um, okay, so wh that's what we did. We bought 92 lists going into San Antonio and we they were almost all stacked list and then we super stack them. So I'll, I'll share my screen now. So over here, you have the, the list key, skip tracing cost, total cost, how many leads came in. And then here's what I really care about is the lead, the lead rate. You don't care how many leads you got because it depends on the size, right? If you have a, a, a list that has 
four people in it and one of them turns into a lead, you have a 25% conversion. But if you have a list that has a hundred people and you get four people, hey, wait a second, guys. Sorry, we're printing off some coloring for my kids so they won't pester you all when we're on the call. There you go. <laughs> um, and you have four people respond positively, affirmatively, I wanna sell my house. And out of a list of 100, why, why spend so much money buying this list of 100, skip tracing this list of 100, marketing to the list of 100, if you're going to get the same amount of leads than if you were to just buy four lists with four people in it, totaling 16 to get four leads, right? So that's what we ended up doing here. Um, so you'll notice this list key is just for brevity's sake. On the in this cell right here, you see that 07A46 equals San Antonio. This is, a, this is how we market uh, all of our lists. Here's the market, or this is how we title all of our lists. Here's the market, the date that we pulled it, and what the list is, and, and the list source, right? So if you guys are going to be pulling a lot of lists, this is the way um, that I found to be the, the most organized way uh, to, to title your list. And so let's just go with this one, 07A23. That is a seniors, so age over 65 and vacant properties. Mm -hmm. is that exactly. Yep. So this yeah. one right here, this is a, a super stacked list. There was only one person that fell in here and they were senior out of state absentee owner that had a lien and they had low equity. Like this is almost perfect. And I think the next list is like my perfect one. I don't actually know. Who knows? These things metrics change every day that's not the one that it's i wanted amazing how well you track all of your information that's what i want to get into it's next, next level actually. man this is yeah you're next level most of us bro we just pay one fee for send out right. the stock and then we just pray to god something comes in right. <laughs> and it comes in we can't remember what list we mailed to we're like oh i think that was the one from last week right yeah, so uh, I'm not going to be able to find it. I don't want to waste your you guys' time uh, looking for it. But here's what I was going to say is I've, I've been where you are. And if there's anything that you take from this, is it's be organized and track your stuff and, and do what you can do consistently. And then second, I think that those are the t absolutely the two most important things. And if I were to convey anything and save you all a lot of money and a lot of hours and a lot of heartache, it would be those two things. And then the next thing underneath that, I wouldn't consider it in the top three. It's like, there's a little bit of space, but it's follow-up. If you can automate your follow-up with that person, all these bad leads, or if they're just like kind of a warm lead, but they're ready to be converted, just not right now. Maybe they need to wait till their kid graduates. Maybe they need to wait in, until whatever the situation is. They're just not ready to take action right now. And then put them on a, on a follow-up drip that's 100% automated. And when they respond, you get a notification. You've just revived that lead from the dead. I would consider that a, a very close third. But this stuff, this tracking stuff, like I want you to think about the power of buying these, these stacked lists and then making them a super stacked list. And so we, we have a lead in here that we got on contract. It was, it was everything. It was a senior who had inherited the property from their very elderly uh, father who had just passed away, but they, he had just bought in the house. So it was low equity. And so she owns it, but doesn't live in it. So she's also an absentee owner. It was, um, it had a lien on it because they had like done, uh, redone the roof, but they didn't pay the guy who did the roof because they didn't have any money. It had a lien. And then there was one other thing because it, it had six, six like super huge motivating factors. But everyone doesn't target this list because it's low equity. But what can you do with low equity? You can create a wrapped mortgage. You can wrap the note. You don't have to wholesale everything. You don't have to flip everything. And so I was going after this list and I got an abnormally high response rate back from these people. Why? Think about absentee owner that's high equity. I pity people who end up on this list because all you guys are marketing to them. And all day long, they hear from investors, I could buy your house, you know, blah, 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 blah. They just get bombarded. Where these people over here try to think about a, a list that people aren't so likely to target. And it's going to be low equity. It's going to be a, a not a, maybe even an upside down house. I guess, you, I mean, you can still force appreciation into a house by owner financing or something like that. So you get these lists and you super stack them and you find those cool little niches. 
and you're spending so little on marketing. Whereas I've literally bought the entire absentee owner list for Oahu. I've bought the entire high equity list for Oahu. I've taught, I've bought the whole vacant list for Oahu and I have called, well, everyone is going to, um, not believe me and I don't care, but <laughs> we've made a million calls. Here's my cold caller spreadsheet. Once again, tracking everything here's column E is my number of dials. And if I select this and I come all the way down here and then we look at my sum total 937,951 phone calls. That's, that's stupid. Well, no, that's, but here's what I'm saying. That's not awesome. That's the opposite. That's a dumbass thing to do. That's a prideful thing to do to buy all of this garbage and to blanketly go across the whole flipping island of Oahu. That's the stupidest thing ever. If you can super stack your list and then spend so little money on that list, so little money on skip tracing it, so little money on marketing, and then think about all the non-monetary things that you can have afterwards. What's the most important thing in life? Time. Time equals life. So if you can get people who come in who can easily convert that you don't have to follow up with for years, you've just saved yourself so much time that you can enjoy spending however you want. And I think that that's the most important thing that I've learned out of this and that all of that comes with with doing something that converts quickly and that comes with, with just tracking your numbers and being consistent. Otherwise, if you blow all this money on marketing and you're not consistent with it, you just you know, blew a bunch of money. Oh, you right, need I'm off my soapbox. You need some oxygen and some water, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> about 45 minutes. That was fantastic. They, well, first of all, thanks for being honest. Thanks for sharing everything. Um, I don't know about everybody else, but it, in some ways it was, it was so inspiring, but there's so much information to gather there um, that we just you know, need to all probably process it and figure out what questions we have. But a couple of questions that I think some folks had, um, I think we got most of them answered. We got the conversions. Do we miss anybody's questions? I have one. Uh, you answered my first one, Keith, but I mean, like, it, it sounds like for you, you're definitely more interested in the targeted leads as opposed to just, you know, doing a shotgun blast and hoping that one hits like, like shooting that nine millimeter is, is definitely working for you as opposed to going for the, the large blast. Yeah. So much so that, uh, I don't do any of this marketing anymore. I, uh, fired by virtual assistants who are doing the SMS and the ringless voicemail. I no longer do cold calling. And now we're, I showed you this graph. I about, I just, so I got out of the Marine Corps. I have more time than I, than I ever have right now, but that's like the reason why I got out of the Marine Corps was to do what I freaking want to do in life. And, and so maybe I'm going a little bit to an extreme and I can acknowledge that, but I've gone from, from here, sorry, here on, on the graph to now here. So now all we do so there's two different types of marketing. There's outbound marketing, which is everything that I told you guys out to this point, you know, driving for dollars, outbound marketing, ringless voicemail, text messages. Uh, we, we do bandit signs, uh, carb magnets, door hangers, um, freaking newspaper ad. No, that's actually an inbound marketing. Um, what else? All these things that I've talked about, those are all outbound marketing. It's, it's, hey, I buy houses, I buy houses, or rather we buy houses, we buy houses, we buy houses. Whereas inbound marketing, is that person, you know, is on Google, is on Facebook, is on some sort of search engine and they acknowledge that they have a problem. They are, are ready and willing. It's like that, what's the first step of AA, like acknowledging that you are an alcoholic or something. And so like they acknowledge that they have a problem and they're actively looking. And so those people, you know, I'm, I'm on such a targeted list now that hundred percent of them actually want to sell their house and are, are ready right now today to take action. And so that's, that's where we are now. I, I no longer, as of, um, I don't know, 45 or 50 days ago, uh, we no longer do any, any outbound marketing. Everything is inbound. Very cool. Very cool. And all residential, right? So far? Yes. The residential single family. Perfect. When, so for everybody else's benefit, Keith and I have been brainstorming about trying something a little bit out of his box and out of our box. And that is uh, doing some multifamily lists and then uh, targeting Vegas as a whole new market. So, um, we're going to be probably launching something here pretty shortly and we'll keep everyone updated because uh, we're taking the best of the best of Keith's strategies and trying to apply them to a whole new different channel or category uh, of yeah. multifamily. So <clears throat> excited. Should, should go well. 
Anybody got other questions or thoughts for Keith? Hey Keith, uh, I had a question and thanks for sharing brother. Um, uh, I didn't get, I, I was going back and forth, sorry. So um, my question is, with all of the leads that you guys are generating and bringing in, I didn't get what the exit strategy was with you guys. Are you guys wholesalers? Are you guys actually taking them on as doing flips or what's, what, what are you guys doing? I, uh, I, I, I never start a marketing form with my exit strategy in mind because the situation that that person is in is gonna determine my exit strategy. But the three exit strategies um, that we look into is wholesaling, wholetailing, meaning it, it's not really a flip, it's like a lipstick type of thing. I've just, uh, I've realized with the houses that we flipped, I'm really bad at it, awful. We always go over budget, we always go over time, we always have issues with the contractor. As soon as we do something, we're like, oh my God, this is not what we expected. Open up a wall, now there's a whole new problem. I'm really bad at it, and I, on, admittedly, I haven't done it very much, but I didn't like the management of it when I had a, a full-time Marine Corps job in flipping a house. So we, we focus on wholesaling, wholetailing, nice easy stuff, and wrapping notes. And, and we're, we're moving more this direction than anything. Wrapping notes is kind of the strategy that I really want to get into because I think that there's way more money to be made in, in wrapping notes than either of those two strategies even combined. Um, but we've done all three and I like the wrapping better, but I never like have an exit strategy in mind when I do a marketing. It's just whatever, whatever that lead dictates. Great question. Uh, Keith, some, uh, Corbett, Tr Tristan, we're asking about what you're doing relative to Facebook ads and PPC. And then John asked kind of some, something similar if you're doing Google and Facebook ads now. So yes, we're doing Google and Facebook ads. And I think Tristan's question would be like how much we're spending. And I, um, right now we're spending about $5,044 to $5,000 a month. It kind of fluctuates each month. Um, but really it, it depends on what you want to bring in right we've nailed it down to it it takes 12 to 15 leads um, to get a contract and one out of three contracts falls through and so really what that what that says is i need to get three contracts to get two deals and to get three contracts it, you can rework everything you always uh seven habits of highly effective people it's a great book and one of those seven habits is begin with the end in mind so i want two deals a month out of the two deals a month, I need to get three contracts. The next step before the contracts is how many leads are coming in. Well, I'm converting 12 to one. So if I want three, I need to get 36. And so before your, your leads comes uh, just marketing, how, mu how much do I need to market to bring in 36 leads? And how much does that cost really? And the cost for that um, for, for Facebook is $9 per lead. And the cost for that on Google um, is 68, I think. It's maybe like 65, $68 per lead. So 36 times that, I don't know the math. I, I just know that we're spending about $5,000 a month. But you can rework how what you want based off of that criteria. It all goes back to tracking your numbers and being consistent. If you weren't consistent, you don't know your freaking numbers. And if you're not tracking, you don't know your freaking numbers. That's the most important thing to this game is just knowing your numbers which you do a great job of knowing your numbers, man. It's I don't, I don't remember it. It's all just on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a great job. Um, actually, Arlene asked a question that I, I was going to ask you earlier too. Um, you said wrapping notes, and that's kind of a concept we haven't talked a lot about. Can you just, obviously we want to have time to dive into that whole strategy, but just high level, what is wrapping notes? Okay. Um, there's two types of houses, houses that have mortgage and houses that are owned free and clear. So there's two different entrance strategies for creative financing. Oh, there's way more than two, but I'm going to go with the two that go into wrapping notes, right? There's purchasing with, with uh, owner financing, meaning there's no mortgage on this house. That person owns it free and clear, and they're going to give you a mortgage. They're going to carry back a note and be your bank. That's called owner financing. And then you have the opposite. This person has a mortgage, and this mortgage is $200,000 at 3.5%. At and the monthly payment equals this. We're gonna buy that house subject to its underlying mortgage. So now that I have the house, I'm, I'm going to sell it with owner, owner financing. And so if you think about this as a, a 
if somebody can write, uh, never mind. I'll write it in the chat. OFV owner finance value equals ARV times 1.12 minus repairs times 0.6 in parentheses. Minus repairs. Yeah, cool. So what that really means is you can take this house that has an ARV, the comps all support an ARV of $300,000. I mean, get out my computer because I'm not very smart with math, okay? Give me a second. The ARV is $300,000. And you're going to times that, you're going to add 12%. So I'm going to times 1 point, excuse me, 1.12. So you're up to $336,000. But there's $8,000 in repairs that you would normally pay a contractor. But you're not going to give that person the credit of all $8,000 because it's their dang house. They don't get to, they don't get paid for that money. Like if a contractor is going to do the work, he's going to make profit off of his work. He's working per hour, right? But that person is that's called freaking sweat equity. You know, you're going to fix your house to make it look how you want it. And you're not going to get paid for your labor. So that's why it's 0.6. So then minus in parentheses, $8,000 times 0.6 comes to $331,000. So ARV of $300,000 in this situation will inflate to an OFV. You can now owner finance this house for $331,000. So you're forcing appreciation because this person can't get conventional financing. They're not a W-2, they're a 1099. They're, they're, their income is going up and down and a lender is not going to get, or maybe they have a BK on their record. Maybe they foreclosed in, in five years ago. Maybe they had a marriage and it screwed them and, and that's still on, but it's about to fall off their credit report. They've got two years left. They've got three years left. It's going to fall off. They fix their life. They have a job. They have consistent income. They have cash and cash reserves to put down a down payment and to float themselves for a couple of months if something goes wrong. So we underwrite these people just like a bank does, but we're willing to give these people a second chance at home ownership that a traditional bank sees as too risky. And so we take this, this property, let's put $250,000 mortgage one that I was talking about with a 4.5, or I think I, think I said 3.5% um, interest rate. And let's say the monthly payment is $1,000. And that's uh, P-I-T. They have taxes escrowed into that payment, okay? So $1,000, and you're gonna owner finance for 330. You're going to owner finance with a 6.99% interest rate. And so that's going to, and I, somebody can do that math if you want to. Let's just make up a facade number once you uh, escrow in your taxes at 1750. So you're going to cash flow 750 bucks from day one. That's just, but then before that, that person, what's a normal down payment? 10 to 25% down. So you're going to ask them 10% down, $30,000. That's going to take their note down to 300, right? It was 330. Now they've dropped it. They've paid you $30,000 and you owe, they owe you 300. Your note equity between these two is 50,000. They have 250, you have 300. Now, if you think about this one, the mortgage with the bank is at 3.5. Yours is at 6.99. So theirs is going to, they're principal amount is going to go down way faster than yours is. That's going to spread that equity gap even further. So there's three profit centers. There's your down payment, pure profit. There's your monthly payment between the interest spread. This is really hard to hold this finger up. And then when that person balloons you out, their BK drops off, their foreclosure drops off, they fix their credit, you get them hooked up with the credit repair agency that you're getting paid to refer them to, by the way, or whatever, you help that person out and they refinance you, that, that balloon payment comes in from the bank that they refinance, boom, you just collected that $50,000. But if it's seven years down the road, that $50,000 in note equity has now spread to 70. So now you get that profit center of $70,000. That's called, that's note wrapping. And um, if you have an owner finance, you want it at 0% interest. So you're just saying, I'm gonna pay you $1,000 a month. Is that agreeable to you? You do not talk about interest rate. And those ones you don't wanna balloon out, why? Because you're just leveraging $250,000 at 0% interest. Nobody in the world is going to do that for you. And so those ones you never want to balloon out. So you give that person a little bit lower interest rate. You collect a little bit less on the monthly spread, but your gap is still like 5%. So you're paying 100% principal on this, on your notes with the seller, and yours is just trickling down slowly because it's at 
5.56, whatever you choose, you know? So there's 101. That's pretty good. I like it. That's very well said in a very short time. In fact, I think uh, we should do a whole call on seller financing and wraps and such because it's super interesting and a great, I think it's potentially going to be the one of strongest strategies as we come through COVID. Uh, a lot of people yes. are going to be on equity or not equity and they're going to need to get out. And so, yeah, um, yeah that'd be pretty But powerful. this is how, and, and this is how uh, I'll put a plug in even more so with wrapping. If somebody, if the ARV Let's say they owe 280, okay guys? So they owe 280 and the ARV is 300 and, the, and there's $8,000 of repairs needed to bring it up to 300. That seems pretty reasonable to me. How many people that are in that situation can hire a realtor, pay the realtor, the closing cost and their mortgage, run the numbers in your head if you can, and still come out with money? Zero, none of them, it's impossible. They're gonna have to come to the closing table with money. But how many people right now have money to drop? They don't have an extra $8,000 to, to put into the repairs. They don't have an extra probably $11,000 to pay the realtors and the closing costs. And so now you can come in and this is how I can buy houses at higher than retail price is because I'm going to sell it for above retail price, right? So if you're looking, if you're doing the whole like ARV times 0.7 minus repair costs equals MAO, Sure, that's great. That's perfect for wholesaling. I mean, excuse me, that's perfect for flipping it. And that one minus your wholesale fee equals your, equals your wholesaling MAO. Uh, that's great for that exit strategy. And that's what we do for those exit strategies. But if they say no to that, which of course they are, because they have a freaking mortgage, then you can come in and say, you know what? You're right. I can't come in and buy your house with cash. But potentially there's another way. The numbers are pretty tight, but let me tell you what I think I can do. I can pay your mortgage. And then we, and then we just walk them through. We have, we have different types of subject to and, and owner financing stuff and, and some now, some later. How do you want to split up the down payment? We're super creative. And that is how you can overpay. You can overbid every other investor and get these properties under contract by learning how to wrap those notes. That's uh, a fascinating topic. I've got so many more questions that we should talk about on notes, but let's <laughs> good for another conversation because definitely. It's, it's it definitely is fascinating we'll have you back keith we just we just you just almost blew a whole hour of talking and it feels i'm like sorry <laughs> so good it's amazing but why don't we just wrap back up to any other questions relative to i remembered i remembered who where i skip trace from if you all want to write down idi that's my top tier um skip tracing i the letters idi um it's a really old if you look at like a, I think it's called bios like it's like an operating system that's what their platform looks like i would not encourage you to try to find figure it out yourself like pay a virtual assistant five dollars to skip trace your list for maybe whatever 15 bucks to skip trace your list for you using it it's really confusing but idi so far and like i said i've used a plethora of skip tracing services and idi so far has given us the best data that's awesome and you find idi by just going idi online.com yeah idi.com I'll put like it in IDI data or something like that. Perfect. Sweet. Hey Keith, I know you said they're kind of a, a bulk service. What's their like minimum uh, amount of leads? Thousand, ten thousand, fifty thousand. I don't think 50, they. Thousand? I don't think they have a minimum. Um, admittedly, I kind of get whatever I want because we're skip tracing at such a high volume that if I give them a list that has four people in it, they'll skip trace it for me because I'm skip tracing next month a, a ten thousand people. Um, I, don't, I really don't think they have a minimum. If they do, it's probably going to be like 50. Gotcha. This okay, is all sorry. I wanted to share that before we did any more questions. That's rather important. Oh, that's good. So um, for everyone's reminder, this recording will be on our Facebook page. I think uh, somebody said, I think Arlene's like, I'm gonna have to listen to this again. And I think most of us would want to listen to it again for some of the different uh, resources that Keith gave us. There's a ton of them. Keith, can you also drop your email address in there so we can all stalk you and uh, email you directly for any additional questions? This was obviously very fascinating. And uh, I think it's, it's a good season to consider that for 2021 as some of us are setting goals for next year and acquisitions. Um, I really loved what you had to share with consistency um, and really dialing into whether you got time or money. It's perfect. Um, any final uh, words, Keith?
mental fortitude is everything in this business. So if you can get a, find a way to get through the tough times, I think that's what I'm working on the most. Like 2020, I talk a big talk, but like 2020 has been rough on me. You know, like I'm getting on the Marine Corps. I just went away from a six figure job with full benefits. It's hard to sleep. I'm stressed out. I'm all the time looking at my computer and sitting here. And I think that mental fortitude and like finding a place of peace, meditating consistently, journaling, just writing some stuff down is going to be really important. And especially when you're like putting in your hard earned money into marketing and you're learning all these new things, the rate of growth is huge. And sometimes it can be pretty discouraging and finding a way to push through it, like get through the bad times. Cause if you get through this time, there's going to be blood in the water coming up in the next year or two. And if you can make it through now to be present, then you're, it's going to be worth it. I promise you, if you don't quit success is inevitable, as long as you don't quit and remember that. And so I, I think uh, one of my favorite quotes right now is from, um, well, I forget who it's from, but he says, uh, eat shit for four, excuse my language, eat shit for 48 months eat caviar for the rest of your life. And if you can just get through the hard times, find a way to have that mental fortitude, it's going to be worth it in the end. So I just encourage you guys to, to get through it one step at a time, day by day and crush this upcoming year. Love it. That was inspiring. Solid. Well, we don't want to, we don't have anything else we can add to that. That was beautiful. And I think that really is the heart of our whole network here on Coffee Talk is to be a support to each other as we're going through difficult times. Um, and so reach out to one another, anybody that you know that uh, is on the call and just see if we can team up, partner up, be an encouragement, have the mindset to keep pressing forward. Uh, and uh, let's do some stuff together. I know Keith and I have been talking about doing some stuff together. Apparently uh, you and Corbett are gonna go do something on Monday night that we didn't all get an invi invitation to. <laughs> Who somebody said that? I don't know who that was. <laughs> is that uh Kalama? Is it? Uh, I, my chat. I'm not. Right. I haven't looked at the chat at all. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it is. yeah, yeah. So we'll look for the invitation to that uh, fun Monday night event. We'll all show Great. up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, everybody, thanks so much. It's Friday afternoon. Uh, Christmas is around the corner. We'll meet up next Friday for sure, and then uh, likely the week of Christmas. Uh, we may take that off, but uh, next week for sure, uh, we'll try to. Uh, we'll definitely get together. If all of you could be thinking about one thing that you're doing to get ready for 2021, um, next week would be fun if we all just kind of had an opportunity to share either a strategy or a thought that you have on what you're going to do to take your business to the next level. Um, and if you can share that, it could really inspire somebody or give somebody else something to think about. Uh, and it'll be really fun to go into 2021 together and uh, crush it. It's going to be an exciting season unprecedented, of course, as we get a new president in the White House and all kinds of changes, but um, it's going to be, it's going to be good. But with that, Keith, you are amazing, man. Appreciate you, it you as well. so much. And I am so excited that we're going to be working together on Vegas and uh, seeing how some of this stuff turns out. We can keep everybody updated as we experience kind of a new space together. Yeah. Um, but with that, yeah, we'll wrap it up for here. If whoever wants to go, you're welcome to jump off and then uh, Keith will probably stay on. Do you have a couple minutes to stay on in case anybody's got other questions? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we never heard from Corey. So his shishi break took him like an hour and a half. So <laughs> a lot of shishi break turned into one diarrhea break or something. I don't know what's going on over there, but, <laughs> um, but it's awesome. We really appreciate having you on. So to everybody else, have a super good Friday. And of course, uh, reach out to us on Facebook. Uh, Justin will put this up on our Facebook page and you're welcome to listen to it a couple times more and uh, have a great weekend. Aloha. Keith, you rock, bro. That was amazing, Thanks, brother. You yeah, Keith, man, I appreciate it. Keith, that was awesome. It's always awesome hearing you hearing you talk about that. Um, you're you're like next level with your KPIs. <laughs> yeah, that's my business partner built all this for me. It's really cool that I just get to use it. <laughs> yeah, I had a quick question about insurance. So, who are you using on your creative deals for? your insurance that's a big thing for like pace morby's group